Let's talk about the human factor. Trump's strong endorsement of Cruz this week is surprising yeah. given the animosity between these two gentlemen in 2016. Let's watch. I watched Ted Cruz this morning. Oh, I can't listen. So dramatic. Ah, oh, oh. Can't watch. This man is a pathological liar. Lion Ted comes in and he holds the Bible up. And he holds it high, right? He holds it high. And then he lies. He lies. The man is utterly amoral. It, morality does not exist for him. His father was with Lee Harvey Oswald prior to Oswald being, uh, you know, shot. It's not easy to tick me off. I don't get angry off. But you mess with my wife, you mess with my kids, that'll do it every time. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. Oh, because he made fun of her looks. I mean, we know he's done everything. He said his father helped kill Kennedy. His wife isn't good like him. I mean, the personal. You can't get much personal than him. Call him a lying whatever, sack of whatever. Zerlina, they're in love now. Yeah, what are we making that? It's pretty hilarious Bird's to watch. In Texas. It's, it's really hilarious to watch that old tape. It's almost funny to watch Ted Cruz try to muster the anger uh, to push back on Donald Trump, who... Um, successfully bullied all of the Republican candidates with nicknames throughout the primary. Um, but the bottom line is it shows that Ted Cruz thinks he's in a little bit of trouble because if he didn't need Donald Trump, he wouldn't use Donald Trump uh, to campaign for him because I'm sure he does not want to need the help of someone who attacked his wife and said his father killed JFK, which are completely ridiculous things to do. Um, but also, Ted Cruz has been propped up by Dark Money and the Koch brothers um, throughout the course, not just of his tenure, but also this campaign. Pain. So I do think that uh, he feels the pinch because you see Beto raising $38 million in a single quarter. So there clearly is, you know, a lot of energy um, and organizing behind the Democratic Party mm -hmm. right now. And we haven't seen that in Texas in a really long time. And that's been building over many election cycles. Um, and, you know, it's not comparable to a state like Virginia, Chris, but I was there in 2008 and I remember seeing those polls leading into the election. That was a presidential, not a midterm, so very different. But I remember seeing those polls that had John McCain up seven, eight points leading in. And I think it was just a moment where you put your head down and you fight through the tape. And so in 2008, Barack Obama was able to win Virginia, the first Democrat to do so in 44 years. And so I think Beto has the momentum on his side because he's the underdog. There's a lot of energy there. People do not like Donald Trump. All the polling shows that people are going to vote against Donald okay. Trump. That's the main reason why they're making their choice for Democrats in this election. And so I think, you know, it, we don't know what's going to happen until all the votes are cast. But certainly there is a message being sent that people are not happy with Ted Cruz. Well said. You've lost that nuance you had a few minutes ago. I see that's gone. Anyway, thank you. This is Arlena Maxwell and Goaz. I like a clear argument there. Up next, conservatives are trying to scare voters.